What's up y'all? Welcome to Throttle Only. My name is Nate. Today I have a 2024 Ford F-150 XLT. Let's check it out. So before we hop on in, here's a look at the key fob here. It says Ford on the back. All of your standard controls here on the front. And it's a pretty slim key fob here. And then to start the vehicle, you have to flip out the actual key. There's no keyless start on this XLT. All right, so starting with the front exterior styling here on this XLT. So first off, this color is Agate Black Metallic, and I think it looks pretty nice on this truck. And then looking at this hood, this hood is absolutely massive, and it has a lot of body lines and contours, and I think it looks very good. Towards the windshield here, there are some functional venting there that looks very nice and works well with this vehicle as well. And then as we make our way to the front there, there's a massive Ford logo there. There's also gonna be a front camera that's gonna be hidden in there, which is very functional. And then looking at the grill that is surrounding this nice Ford logo, it does look pretty nice. There is a nice chrome strip on either side of the Ford logo there. So now here's a look at these beautiful daytime running lamps that shine in this beautiful amber color. Even in standard sunlight, they do have a very nice reflection to them. Kind of makes it look like they are on. There's also a look at what they look like at nighttime. And this will also have your standard LED projector headlights as well. And then it also has fog lights down below that you can toggle from the inside. And as we make our way down, you might notice just how much venting there is here in the front. Of course, there's venting where that badge is up here at the front. There's also some venting just down below from that where it's kind of like a mail slot grill, even more where the license plate is and even more down below from that. And lastly, it does have some pretty nice black tow hooks that look very good and of course go really well with this black metallic paint color. So looking at the side of the vehicle here, starting with these wheels. So these wheels look pretty nice. They are covered in chrome. I think they're like 18 inch PVD wheels or something on the website. In my opinion, there's a lot better options on there, especially with the blacked out package as well. But anyway, 275 tires up front here and 275 in the rear. As we come on up and back here, there's a nice F-150 XLT badge and there's some venting in there as well. These mirrors here are absolutely massive. They do have your blind spot monitoring system. It does have that little indicator on the inside of the mirror. And then beneath this entire mirror here, there are cameras there. That's gonna help with your full 360 camera system on the inside. There are some running boards on either side here. They are covered in this nice chrome color on the outside here. And it does say Ford if you look straight down onto it and it does have some texture there so you don't slip. There's also a power boost badge here on the side. Very nice chrome door handles here as well. But unfortunately, it does not have your proximity sensing, so you do have to unlock the vehicle with the key fob. So as far as the rest of the exterior styling here for this Ford XLT, there's not much here for the side profile in the rear, except for this very nice 4x4 graphic, which looks very nice. The fuel door is located on the driver's side and you can easily open it using the fuel door button on the inside of the cabin. And inside it has an easy fuel system. All right, so looking at the rear exterior styling here, so there's really not much styling here in the rear, but I still think it looks very nice. There is that Ford logo there in the center. This does have a reverse camera and then another camera on the side of that with some different views. This also is gonna have a very nice F-150 badge that's really just stamped into the metal here, which looks very nice. Very decent looking bumper as well, and then all of your tow attachments down there where the license plate is. And then lastly, these tail lamps look very nice. Most of the tail lamp, however, is on the side of the vehicle instead of on the rear, and it does have a nice Ford badge there that is stamped on the side. I'll also show you what it looks like when the turn signals or hazards are turned on, and lastly, this does have one full-size spare here that's gonna be underneath the vehicle there. And it's gonna have one exhaust tip that is gonna extend on the passenger side. There are eight trims available for the Ford F-150. The lowest one is the XL, then the STX, XLT, Tremor, Lariat, King Ranch, Platinum, and Raptor. This is the 2024 Ford F-150 XLT with the Super Crew configuration as well as the five and a half foot bed length.
The 2024 Ford F-150 XLT starts at 53,840 US dollars. If you spec this out on Forbes website and you only add one or two options, you'll be way over $60,000. Under the hood, this one has a 3.5 liter power boost full hybrid drive V6 engine. There are four engines to choose from. I'll show you what those look like on screen now. This engine pushes out 430 horsepower and 570 pound-feet of torque. It has a hybrid electric 10-speed automatic transmission and four-wheel drive. It weighs around 7,400 pounds and it gets 22 miles per gallon in the city, 24 highway and 23 combined. All right, so here's a look at what this 3.5 liter power boost full hybrid V6 engine looks like. And then also here's what it looks like from the side view here, just to see where this engine sits in relation to these front wheels here. Okay, so let's look at the truck bed here. So to open it, you'll just use the handle right here. This is not assisted. On the right side here, you have a little bit of storage. And then on this side, you actually have two outlets. It has a nice cover on it. There you are. And then that is the truck bed. And there's also some nice lights up there that you can toggle on on the inside as well. So before I sit in the rear seats here, let's look at the rear door panels here, starting up here at the top. So you have a nice unlock and locking control right there. Decently padded area right here. A decently padded armrest area as well. There's a little small cubby for some storage there. Window control button. There's a nice speaker grill here. Some more storage right there and even more storage down below. So there are some nice storage options here in the rear seats of this XLT. You can just push this little tab here and then pull up and it'll reveal this small little area or the small compartment you can store some stuff in. Now on the other side, you can do the same exact thing. Pull this little pull tab here and then lift. And then now you can see there is a decent amount of storage there that I can use as well. All right, so sitting in the rear seats here of this XLT, there is so much room back here. Again, this is the Super Cruise, so this does have a little bit more space back here. But these seats are very comfortable. They're not leather, unfortunately. There is this cloth material. I think it looks very good, and they are pretty comfortable as well. So as far as my leg room, I have enough room for my knees, my legs, and my feet. And of course, I am sitting behind myself at six foot one. Also behind the driver and the passenger seats here, there is a little pocket here for some storage and it seems like it could fit a decent amount. In the center area here, there are no digital AC controls or anything. However, there are two vents and there's a lot of accessory outlets back here as well. And lastly, no sunroof or moonroof option on this XLT and you just have standard cloth floor mats. Now looking at the passenger side door panel here, so this has very nice materials, just as we saw in the rear here. Unlock, locking controls here, a little area for some storage. Window switch button, an area so you can open the door here. More storage, decent looking speaker grill, and then even more storage down below. Now, as we enter the vehicle here, there's no sill. However, there is some textured material here. And then there's also a Ford logo right here. No automatic seat controls. You do have a manual lumbar adjustment here, and you can see these seats are very comfortable. They are cloth, just like they are in the rear. And then sitting in front of the passenger here, you do have the glove box, which is decently sized. And then there's also another area for some storage. If you just push this button right here, then that'll go ahead and open up. Decent sized areas here. And there's also this soft area right here. And then on this side, you do have some access to a 12 volt adapter as well as an AC 120 volt. And lastly, some more storage down below. And now at the driver door here, the only difference between the passenger door and this one is you have a lot more controls here, of course, to control all of the windows and then to adjust your mirrors. Coming on in, you do have some automatic seat controls here. This one front and back, but you also have a manual tilt option right there. Down below, there's also some rubber pedals. All of your lighting controls are right here on the side and you even have the bed light right there.
So here's a look at the center console slash armrest area. You can see here in the back, there are some cup holders. And there's also this slot right here. You could perhaps put your phone in there. And of course the back seat passengers also have access to this as well. So this is decently comfortable up top here. You can also fold this out into a full table and it is very flat, nice little work surface. You can see it's pretty large. And then you can also fold it on back up and this will also function as a regular center console as well. You just push the button down here and then lift. And then you can also see there's a lot of storage down here, a nice little tray, and it is very deep. And if you want to lock the center console area, you can do so by just inserting the key right there. So in front of that center console area there, there's a lot of area for storage. You could put your phone right here and also has a little lip there so it doesn't slide around. You also have a little slot right here. You can also fit your phone into some more cup holders right there, a little storage area there, and then even more storage up here. And you also have a USB type A and a USB type C. Up from there, there are all of the AC controls. They're very easy to use on off volume and tuning knob there as well. You can easily turn off the screen if you would like to. On the side here, you do have all of the drive modes and this does have four wheel drive. So you'd have some different options there for you. If you plan on trailering with this vehicle, here is the pro trailer button and you'll be able to use this once you have it connected and it is in tow or haul mode. All right, so here's a look at the vehicle startup here. So I'm gonna use the key, go ahead and flip that out and you can just insert right here. and turn and then it'll say ready right there as you can hear there's no engine that you'll actually hear once it starts up and so that's why it says ready right there so here's a quick look at the drive modes using that drive mode selector that is down below so all the way to the left here i have sport mode and that comes with its own gauges and then i'll go ahead and move it into eco and of course, we'll change the layout as well. And then next, I have tow and haul. Then I also have normal mode. And slippery mode. And lastly, off-road mode. When you turn it into off-road mode, then the front camera will come up and it'll also have some nice tire tracks there so you can see where you're going. So this also has a very massive infotainment screen here. At the bottom here, you have audio, CarPlay, navigation, audio sources, apps, settings, features. You also have this very nice section on the side here. So if you are looking at navigation, perhaps on this side, you can also see your CarPlay. And then you can also adjust to what you want to see on here as well. Navigation, phone, trips, fuel economy, eco behavior, off-road, onboard power. And there's also some switches above there. You have some hazard buttons right here, your traction control off, your onboard power button, and then you also have a camera button. So this is what the front camera looks like. And if I switch it into reverse here, here is what the reverse camera looks like. All right, so here's a look at the steering wheel here. So it is a very nice steering wheel. It is wrapped in like this leather-esque material. I'm not sure if it's real leather or not, but it does have some pretty nice stitching up there as well, if you can see that. There's a nice Ford logo here in the center, and then some very nice material down below. I really love this color as well. And then on the left side here, you do have the cruise control options here, lane keep. There's some volume options there, as well as a voice option. And then on the right side here, there's a phone button, you can skip tracks here. There's a back button and a menu button, and these will pertain to the center screen here. If I were to push menu, then it'll bring up a small menu here. It says towing, status inf information, navigation, phone, audio, vehicle maintenance, and settings. Generally, what I like to keep it on is the status information. And then I go ahead and hit OK right there. And you can click any of these and you can toggle them as you would like, just using the arrow buttons right here. So here's tire pressure, seat belts, and then lastly, the engine information. So before we take it out for the drive, you do have a nice little area right here for some sunglasses, it'll flip on out. All of the lighting controls up here. 
And then here's a look at the visors here. They are pretty large. They do fold out. And these ones do extend as well. And lastly, there is a pretty decent size mirror here. All right, y'all, it's time to take this XLT out for a drive. It's already in sport mode. Let's go. <laughs> this thing is actually really, really quick. I mean, I know it's only the XLT, which is like the third trim from all of the eight models available for the F-150, but it really feels like the Ford Raptor when I was driving that one. It is pretty quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch it back into eco mode. It's pretty sweet that this has a full hybrid system and you can literally just see the RPMs just drop off and it's just using that hybrid system, which is pretty nice. So as far as comfortability driving this thing, the steering is extremely light, even in sport mode. If you put it in sport mode, it does not stiffen up honestly at all, at least that I could feel. This does have a decent amount of body roll as well. I mean, it's a pretty giant truck, um, but as far as visibility, the visibility is pretty amazing as well. That back window is massive. These mirrors are also gigantic. Um, as far as insulation uh, uh, from the road and noise, it does a pretty good job with that as well. These are dual pane windows as well, so that definitely helps. And you know, this is just so nice driving with all of these different drive modes. I wouldn't expect a truck like this to have something like slippery just for wet, although it does say that it has icy and uh, snow road use as well. But I mean, if it's raining and you feel like you need to switch it into slippery mode, it'll put it into four wheel drive high and there you go. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually see how the four wheel drive high does when I am doing a zero to 60. Uh, you could probably hear there was a lot of tire noise and screeching when I was trying to do a zero to 60 with just the two wheel drive in sport mode. Okay. Yeah, this is, I am, I am very impressed. And this is just the XLT. And there are so many different options that you can choose from on the website. I mean, I do have a couple of gripes with this specific configuration, uh, one of which is the tailgate is not an easy uh, letdown. You, you actually have to hold the entire weight of that uh, gate, which is very annoying. And then this also doesn't have the start stop, which I would really like. I'm just so used to that. And so it's just weird getting into a vehicle, having to use a manual key to uh, start the vehicle. It's actually been a couple times I've actually forgotten the key because of that. Um, but nonetheless those are just very small minor issues that can be fixed just with choosing exactly what you want on the website so guys i really hope you enjoyed this review this xlt is pretty amazing and if you can figure it however you want on the website you probably love it even more so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one peace